Hey yo, how's it going guys? Baby Bear 4812 here, and today we're gonna to be solving the two sum problem on leak code. Um, it's the first video on this channel, and ironically, it seems to be problem number one on leak code as well. Now, the reason that I really like this problem is because in and of itself, it's not too difficult, uh, especially in this form. But what it does is it does build into a three sum and later a four sum problem, uh, both of which you can find on my channel. I'll leave them in the description below. And so let's find a way to tackle this one. And then again, we'll, we'll kind of build onto these, uh, the bigger and more complicated versions of it. So for those of you not familiar, you can see here that basically the problem says, given an array of integers, nums, and an integer target, return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to the target. Um, you may assume that inputs have exactly one solution. We cannot use the same element twice, and we can return the answers in any order. Cool. Now, let's have a look at an example here. If we're given 2, 7, 11, and 15, and the target is 9, just kind of visually looking at this, we can see that the answer is simply going to be, uh, oh, I said it was obvious, sorry, 2 plus 7, wow, math. Uh, 2 plus 7 yields 9. What we're going to be returning, though, is not the 2 and the 7, but the indices of the 2. Um, similarly, we've got 3, 2, 4 here, 3, 3. Um, so let's get it, we'll, we'll solve this problem directly as it is, then I do want to talk about one slight variation of the problem that, that you may encounter as well going forward. Um, so the thing that we want to keep into, to take into account here is that um, there is a brute force way to solve it. And again, when you get to your interview, I would always encourage you to mention that there is a brute force solution. Um, and to kind of write that one down, you can always just mention and say that uh, there's a brute force solution which would take uh, O of n squared time of n time and we can do it in constant space. Now what the solution entails is essentially checking through every combination of two numbers and seeing if they add up to the actual sum by doing a nested for loop. Uh, I'll leave that to you to go through that solution if you're unfamiliar with it uh, but we can definitely do better and again in an interview setting we really should find a way to do better. There is a way for us to solve this um, in linear time so what we're going to do is, is find a way to solve it in linear time as well as type as well as linear space. Now, this is how we'd essentially go about it. What we have to know is that for every single number that we go across in the, in the array, we need to ask ourselves, what number am I looking for next in order to find that target? So, if I can kind of switch over here and say, let me, let me take a look at this, you know, so, excuse me. Let me take a look at, at this array, for instance, 2, 7, I think they had 11 and 15, and the target was 9. If I'm looking at this element over here, I'm looking at this 2, what I want to say is, okay, I've seen a 2. Now, what would I need to pair with this 2 in order to get the number that I need, which in this case is a 9? Well, what I need is a 7. I would need 9 minus 2 is 7. What we're going to do in order to solve this is to keep track of everything that we've seen so far in order to be able to reference and say, does that number that I need already exist within this array? So what we want to do is we want to say, let's, uh, let's make use of a dictionary or a, a hash table. Uh, the reason we're going to do this is because in the question, we do need to return the index as well as the value. So we've got to keep both of those stored. Once I get to the two, I'm going to ask myself, well, what do I need? I need a seven. Do I have a seven in here? The answer is no, right now our hash table is empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, well, I've seen a two so far and I'm gonna store that two with its index zero. So maybe I'll kind of make a note here and say this is the value and then this is the, the index. Next, I'm done looking at this two. I'm gonna move along and say, let me look at this seven. In order to return, uh, or in order for seven to be part of the answer, what number would I need? Well, seven plus two would give me nine and so if I have a 2 in here, I win. I can return that. Lo and behold, we do have a 2 in here. We've already found one. So what we're going to say is we're going to return this index here, which is index 1. And we're going to return that with this over here, which is index 0. And that's how we're going to return the answer 1 and 0. If this wasn't clear, leave a comment down below. I'll re-explain and address any questions you may have. Now, more importantly, let's kind of jump in and, and see what the code would look like here in the solution. The first thing that we want to do is a bit of basic error checking. So what we're going to say, if we're given a, an empty array, or even an array whose length is, uh, is less than two, because we need a two pair, so we need at least two elements, um, 
then we can simply, I guess it doesn't really specify here, and this is you can clarify with your interviewer, but I'm gonna assume we have to return an empty array here. Um, now, we, what we wanna do is we wanna keep a dictionary, and I'll, I'll just call it scene, which will be an empty dictionary so far. What we're gonna say is as follows. We're gonna to wanna to walk through this entire array, and what we'll say is um, for i in range, um, in the length of numbers. So we're gonna go through the entire array, and we're gonna say this. Um, the target, the number needed, so I'll call it num needed, is going to be equal to the target that we have minus the current number that we're on. Currently, we're going to be on number or nums of i. Now that we know our num needed, we can simply ask ourselves if num needed is in the actual in the scene pile, then what we're going to want to do is we're going to return i, and what we're going to want to return with i is the index of the number that we need, which is going to be scene of num needed, just like that. Now, otherwise, in case that number isn't in there, what we're going to want to do is simply store what we already, or the value that we're on right now, into our scene array so we can use it for future reference. Otherwise, so what we're going to do is we're going to say scene of, um, well, nums of i, the value that we're on right now, uh, is going to equal i, which is the index, because again, what we want to return is the index, not the value itself. There are other iterations of this problem where you return the value. In that case, maybe we could use a set instead of a dictionary, but I'll follow the rules here. Um, and in that case, it looks like in this question, they say we're guaranteed to, to actually have an answer that's going to be returned, uh, meaning that I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that this statement is even necessary. But regardless, if we, if we run this, this should work as planned. And let's see. And there we go. So this is the way that we'd solve it with solve the two sum problem with linear time and linear space. The question doesn't ask for it here, but I do want to give you guys a bit of a bonus snippet on a, on a slight differentiation in this question. And the slight, or the variance I should say in this question would be to return the values instead of the, instead of just the indices. Now, if that were the case, if we were allowed to do that, we could actually employ another tactic, which would be to use the two pointer approach. And what I want to do there is this, maybe I'll kind of come over here and, and draw this over. So imagine that I had some, maybe take a, it can take an array here that's not sorted, it's not much here. Let's say that I had an array that looked as, as follows, oops, excuse me. Uh, I had something like three, five, one, negative two, seven. I had an array that looked like this. And let's say that the target of what I wanted was going to be, let's call it 10. Let's see, we had a target of 10. There is a way to solve this without using an extra dictionary or hash table to actually store these values. First thing we actually have to do is to sub, excuse me, sort this array. And you'll see why in just a minute. If we sort this array, we're going to get negative 2, 1, 3, 5, and 7. What we can do now is actually, as I mentioned earlier, use a two-pointer approach. And what we're going to do with these two pointers is I'm going to leave one pointing at the start of the array and one at the end of the array. Now, what we're going to ask ourselves is this. The sum that I'm currently at right now, is it too high, is it too low, or is it right exactly where I need it to be? The reason we can ask this, and we couldn't do it before, is because the numbers are now sorted. So if I need to adjust the value that I'm at up or down, I can easily move the sliders one way or another to get exactly to where I want to be. So if I ask myself at this position, I've got negative two and I've got seven. If I add those two together, I'm gonna get not negative five, five. Five is less than 10. Since we're too low, that means that I'm gonna to need to take my left boundary and move that one up. So again, I'm gonna take my left boundary and move that one up because I'm going from smaller to greater as I'm going from left to right. So now we're going to ask ourselves, where are we at right now? Well, 1 plus 7 is going to give us 8, which will still, or excuse me, is still less than 10. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of noticing maybe, maybe 6 would be a, a better example here just to make my point. So let's pretend this is 6, and I guess I'll, I'll change this down. I'll say, that's really messy. Uh, we'll say 8 is greater than 6 now, for instance. If the number that we're at is greater than the target, that means that the only way to make our, our total sum smaller is to move the right side over this way. Maybe for you guys, you're kind of seeing it this way. If I was to now take my right pointer and move it downwards, voila, we get to 1 plus 5, which is going to give us 6. 
And at this point, we could simply return one and five. So I know that wasn't asked for in this question, but I'm telling it to you because it's going to become very useful in sum three and sum four. If we were to type the code out for this, um, what we do, and I won't run this one because I know it won't work, but just so you've kind of seen it, what we do is first we sort the array, then we'd say that our left pointer can equal zero and our right pointer can equal the length of nums minus one. And then we can jump into while loop and simply say uh, while less, left is less than right, so our, our pointers kind of haven't met yet, uh, what we're going to do is we can say we're, we're going to have some, you know, I'll call it a temp sum since the sum word is, is dedicated in Python already. Um, temp sum is equal to nums of, of left plus nums of right. And then we ask ourselves, is the temp sum equal to the target? If it is, we're simply going to return, uh, let's say, nums of left and, and nums of right. Otherwise, we'll say if the temp sum is smaller than target, what we're going to do is we're going to want to, again, move the left pointer up. So we're going to say left plus equals one. Otherwise, otherwise it means the sum's too big, so we're going to move the right pointer down by one. If none of this works, we can return an empty array. Again, I won't run this one because I know it wasn't part of the problem specifically, but I do want to reiterate, this is going to be an important solution. We're going to use it in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If any of it doesn't make sense, you have any other questions or maybe other questions that you want me to solve, leave it in the comments down below. I'm happy to address them as soon as possible. See ya.